Yo, what is up guys and welcome to another Wild Rift video and in today's video I'll be playing the cat that everyone hates, Yumi. So Yumi is insane, okay? Yumi is insane, even in solo queue she's insane, right? Like in the in the video that I made where I talked about how I reach challenger in, uh, uh, well how I reach challenger while only playing support, I talked about Yumi being good even if your team is not that good, you know, compared to Lulu, for example, like I used to really think that Yumi and Lulu are like super, super similar. And while both champions are obviously similar, right? Like they're both buffing champions. I found that there was much more behind Yumi, like much more behind how to play Yumi and how to provide value as a Yumi. I'll get more into this during the gameplay. Now I'll explain to you guys how to build Yumi. There are timestamps in the description to skip to the gameplay. So how do you build Yumi? Um, it is situational, of course, but 90% of the games, you just go for Arden Sensor because this is what works best with Yumi. Because Yumi gives a lot of, uh, Yumi gives attack speed when she heals with a third ability. So you generally want to be putting Yumi on like a champion that benefits from attack speed, right? Like that it generally works the best. You don't have to, of course, because she also works on a mage. But what I'm trying to say is Arden Sensor gives even more attack speed and it adds that bonus magic damage to those attacks. This. So Yumi is already going to give a lot of attack speed and then even more with the Ardent Sensor and then it's going to add that bonus damage to every single attack which is an incredibly powerful tool to funnel as much damage on a carry as you can. So after that, you get boots. You get the Ionian boots of lucidity, always Ionian because of the cooldown reduction. Then you get like, I really recommend the locket but you can also get the shadows. Now. Um, when you should get shadows up against champions that can become invisible, like the Akali, like the Kha'Zix, like the Kai'Sa, you know, Kai'Sa with her empowered third ability, like the Evelyn, etc, etc. You only want to be getting shadows against those types of champions, because while the slow is pretty good, the item gives, the better part about this item is revealing the enemy. If you can reveal an enemy that is invisible, it provides a lot of value. So as your second item, situational. I have an Athene's Unholy Crow here, but it is completely situational. Staff of Flowing Water is obviously an amazing item, especially if you find that like your AP carries are also doing a lot of work. If that's the case, you can get a Staff of Flowing Waters. You can even get a Staff of Flowing Waters as your first item. If you, for example, have like an Orianna mid lane and an Evelyn jungle, for example, and you're like, okay, whatever, you know, I want to buff my ADC, but I'm also going to be buffing them. Then the Staff of Flowing Water is going to provide a lot of value. As your third item, you pretty much always want to get a Ravenous Death Cap. It's just always worth it because you get a lot of ability power from an ally when you're attached to him and then Rabanos death cap is going to increase it even more so this item is quite literally the perfect mid late game item for yumi so you always get this item as like your third item as seems unholy girl if you don't have it already you get it as your fourth item and then fifth item you're probably never going to reach it but it's completely situational basically um for the runes, you always go for Ari. this is the go-to rune on yumi always second rune now the thing about weakness is there's just really no no other rune that you can go for. Like all these other runes are just not good. I guess you could go for Gathering Storm, you know, to get to the late game, but I don't know. Like, is it really worth it? I wouldn't say so. The thing with weakness is it procs with your ultimate and it procs with your first ability. But it's of course not the easiest. These are not the easiest abilities to hit. It's not like other champions, like Janna, for example, right? Because Janna can proc weakness with three of her abilities. Now, Yumi, it's a bit harder, but I would still say it's worth it. So as I said, you either want to go for Gathering Storm or the weakness. Like weakness, is, again, weakness really isn't a good rune on Yumi, but it's the best out of all of these runes. For your third rune, you go for loyalty. You don't need any of these runes, so might as well just go for royalty and give your ally 5 armor and 2 magic resist. You know, it's not that much, but it's better than nothing. For your fourth rune, you do not go for mana flow band. I know a lot of people would think this is the best one. You don't. You go for hunter genius. Reason is because your passive already gives you back mana and you having more mana doesn't really matter that much because your, your, your third ability uses a percentage of your mana. So even if you have 100 mana or 1000 or 10,000, it uses 15% of your mana. So might as well get a lot of ability haste and just be better at using your passive, which I'll tell you about during the gameplay, of course. For your spells, it's situational, but you know, ignite, exhaust, these are the ones that you really want. You know, you can go for a heal. I don't really recommend it because just ignite and exhaust are just generally much better. Like imagine having an ignite and exhaust, and then your ally, your you know, the ADC has a barrier as well. Like 
oh my god you're so powerful so that is it about the build and let's now get into the gameplay all right on to the gameplay um i have a few things to say by the way which is kind of funny um this is about the support videos that I've been uploading on my YouTube channel. I just want to let you guys know, all these videos are performing so incredibly badly. <laughs> you know why? You know why? Because apparently, like, viewers just don't like watching support videos. I personally don't care. You know, I don't care. I'm going to make you guys support videos because I love the support maze out there as well. But the YouTube algorithm does care. So, you know, I hate to say it like this, but make, if you want to give the video a like, put down a comment. I'm also doing a skin giveaway, you know, for the comments. But like this video, it would help massively. Reason is because the views are just not that high on these videos. Again, I, like I'm not complaining. It's just that the YouTube algorithm, blah, blah, blah. Basically, if you want to support the channel, give the video a like. That's what I'm basically saying. So let's now fully talk about the video. So Yumi. Um, the thing about Yumi is, it's really all about, like, it's, a, it's a all about a few things. The first thing is att attaching to the right ally. This is very important. This is not that hard to do. The second thing is being able to use your passive, like this. Unfortunately, my Kai'Sa died, but that is what I mean with being able to use your passive. Um, I'm just going with the Lee Sin now. It is fine that we're getting this, oh, but what I mean is using your passive. So here, basic attack, that's my passive, you see? Your passive gives you a barrier and it and it um, brings back mana. So when you're attached on an ally, make sure you find opportunities to de-attach, uh, de hit a basic attack on the enemy, refund your mana and get that barrier. Because then as you can see, you can give that barrier to your teammate. And when you refund your mana, what does that mean? You can use your abilities more often. Right? Like It means that you can push your abilities more, use your abilities more often and that's the important part about it. Now let's talk about the butt, because there is a very big butt here. Of course, using your passive is good, but if you get CC'd while de-attached from an ally, you are completely screwed. Like, hardcore screwed. Because if you get CC'd, you cannot reattach to your allies for a few seconds, which means you're losing out a lot of damage and your escapability. Because Yumi's escapability is attaching to allies. But if you cannot, you're gonna die. Now a champion like a Draven is an absolute hard counter to Yumi. And the reason is because Draven has his third ability. This is a like it's a very easy way for him to uh, knock me to side to the side. Like look, I basic attack him. If he knocks me back, I cannot reattach to the Kaisa. I just can't. And if that happens, we have a problem. Because then Draven can attack me, do an immense amount of damage, and maybe even kill me. So here you can see this, exactly this. You see, this is the problem. If he does that to me, I am screwed. Because then I can get caught and I can die. So here I have my ultimate, my exhaust and ignite on standby. So I'm like, hey, let's go. I want to get the skill because I feel like we can get the skill, right? Like I can be super aggressive. It seems like Kai'Sa doesn't. Oh, here I need to use my ult. Yeah, there we go. That should be a free kill. There we go. Shen is actually saving the day as well. This was really good as you can see. Um, like you may argue that using all of my summoner spells and my ultimate before the first dragon even spawns is a bit of a waste. It is not. Let me tell you why. Because first of all, we used it very early. Secondly, we killed a draven. Killing a draven is always worth it. Right? Like if you get to the late game, you outskill a draven. So if you just kill the draven, deny his stacks, it is worth it. It's generally pretty much always worth it. So, you know, like the dragon is spawning. We also have a Vagar, which is a, which is a late game champion. We don't have to fight for it, really. Like... We don't have to fight for it. Yet again, like this is a common thing that a lot of people make mistakes on. We don't have to fight for the dragon. Of course, it would be nice if we take it, but we don't have to. We just really don't have to. Wow, he's two levels behind, actually. What? Oh, he's gonna die. Oh, he's 0 3, actually. I'm just telling him to stop feeding. I mean, it doesn't really help that I tell him stop. Like, not like he's gonna stop feeding now, but I don't know why I said it. I guess I was tilted a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, we're not doing that well right now. It seems like they may go for the Rift Herald, but we can't start the dragon because Draven and Thresh can 2 versus 3 us. So, yeah. Oh, he just used his knockback, which means I can use my passive for free and engage, as you can see. Forcing away the flesh from Draven, this is worth it. This was worth it. You can see the enemies are applying a lot of pressure on us, but this means we can get the dragon 
Uh, this is actually a pretty decent dragon, I guess. It's not an amazing dragon, but yeah, this is the problem. Like, what are we gonna do? We're not gonna win this fight. We're just not gonna win this fight. So you can clearly see we don't have to, and like Kaisa needs to go back. Kaisa! Oh, passive though? Oh my god, we're doing it. Look at this. Look at how tanky the Kaisa is. It was very important for me to hit that passive, by the way. Oh, I'm dead as well. When your ally dies, you're dead too. Vagar is not saving the day either. I want to attach to him. He's too late. Ah, oh, Vagar, come on. Why did the Vagar not get close to me? Oh, that was nice though. But if he got a little closer to me, I would have survived this as well. And I would have buffed him too, which means he would deal more damage. By the way, um, hey, 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 hey. I was actually on a losing streak here, I remember. I was on a losing streak, I think. That's why I was toxic, but this is not okay. This is this is probably this is the maximum toxicity that you can have. Like this is already not okay. I'm not happy. But I cannot filter it away from you guys. You know, I'm I'm toxic too sometimes. I'm not happy about it. But it is what it is. Uh, yeah, don't say that of course. That's not a that's not a good example. Don't do that. But what I was talking about is um Oh, exactly. Like, I have to be very careful here. Look at this, by the way. What I was talking about is um, Yumi is exceptionally good with Vagar. Exceptionally good. Exceptionally good. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, the chat is a bit stupid. Yet again, this is really stupid. You'll see the Vagar actually has a very nice mindset. You'll see it in the chat how it boosts the team's morale. Like just look at this game. You will really want to see this game to the late game. The Vagar really has an amazing mindset and me and you guys can learn from it, right? So let's take a look at what happens here. This should be a free kill. Boom. There it is. Exactly. This is okay. I'm going to abandon him probably. Ah, this, is, this is risky. This is really risky. Yeah. Now I'm probably, yeah, exactly. I should have just abandoned him, to be honest. It was really risky. Draven says just FF. So why is Yumi insanely good with Vagar? The reason is, very simple, actually. We should actually be able to win this, by the way. Basic attack. Attach, give the barrier. Oh, it worked. Boom, nice. So the reason is, Vagar gets a lot of ability power, right? Like Vagar stacks, he gets like a thousand ability power in the late game. What does Yumi do? Give even more ability power and it's percentage based. And the more ability power the champion you attach to has, the more you get as well. Which means all of my abilities are going to be super strong as well. So like Vagar works perfectly with a Yumi. Oh my god. I had to root him there. No. Yeah, I had to root him. If I didn't, I would have just died. It is what it is. But like, we just have such a broken late game composition. Because Yumi as well is insanely powerful in the late game. So let's see how this game goes, I guess, right? Like, let's see how it goes. Mm. Yeah, the enemies are applying so much pressure on us. As you can see, they're pushing top lane, they're pushing bot lane. They were pushing mid lane as well. We're just in a very bad position right now. But yet again, if we reach the late game... It is a free win, but it's of course about reaching the late game, right? Like we do have to reach the late game. Let's take a look. The reason that I'm not de-attaching as easy... Yeah, exactly. This is why I wasn't de-attaching. I still did it. It was a mistake. De-attaching was a mistake. Exhausting the jacks. I am attached to the Kai'Sa. Uh, Vagar, Vagar, Vagar. He couldn't actually get close to me. Like I was just dead. And now this is the big problem about Yumi. And... This is really the major problem about Yumi. You can see we're all just surrendering. The only one not surrendering is the Vagar. Yet again, you'll see his motivational speech in the chat. Stop, stop, please stop. I mean, I know this is true, but I don't have to say it. Please, enough. Uh, let's just wait for the Vagar speech, guys. Let's just wait for the Vagar speech. That's because, that's what our team needs right here. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So as a, as a Yumi, 
you can choose who you're attached to, right? Like, and that's the beauty of Yumi. You can basically amplify the strongest link of your team. And what I mean with that, the strongest link being the, the you know, the strongest player. So in this case, if you, if you, as you can see, it's the Vega and the Kaisa. So what am I going to do? Attach to the Vega and the Kaisa, right? Like, and in the very late game, very, yeah, you see Vega farm, we win in late, guys. That's true. This is the truth. Farm and we win in late. It doesn't matter what happens now. We win the late game. So as you can see, I'm just attached to the Vega here. Boom, I give him a barrier as well. I ult, I give him every tool that he needs to carry the fight very easily. And now it's the Kai'Sa going on the on the, on the the stupid champion name, Akshan. I attach to the Kai'Sa. I constantly attach to the champion that is dealing the most damage. Here, I screwed up. I screwed up. Yep, 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 yep. Shan saved my ass. But I'm just clearly screwing up so often on this Yumi, guys. You can see it's just... It's so dangerous. Here, basic attack the Jax. Boom. Attached to, I'm attached to an ally, I attach to the Vagar now, and we win the fight. So you can clearly see this is definitely not a perfect Yumi game. And you can see how hard you get punished if you screw up only once on Yumi. Um, but of course, if you do it well, you, uh, it's the opposite, right? Like you really get, uh, how do you, what's the word? The opposite from punished. <laughs> I forgot the name of the word. rewarded you get rewarded a lot if you're able to constantly get your passive on your allies because you're refunding the mana which means that you can spam your abilities and you're able to constantly buff your allies here you can see like look i'm just attaching to the to the vagar i'm rooting the thresh i'm trying to get my passive but i realized like it's too risky now so let me give you a tip on how to get the passive a bit more e effectively right because after i played some games of yumi i can tell you kind of have to analyze their composition and understand which champions can very easily knock you up, stun you or whatever, right? And if we look at this enemy composition, Draven and Gragas, you know, these are the obvious ones. They are, they can very easily uh, stop, like they can very easily knock me up, CC me and everything like that. And then the other ones are of course Jax with his stun, but that's not really a problem because I can just avoid his stun very easily. It's not that hard to avoid. Uh, of course, you know, if I can just attach to an ally. But the big problems, as I said, are Draven at Thresh as well. And then also the Gragas. So after these champions use a lot of their knocking or a lot of their CC abilities, that's when you want to de-attach, attack an enemy and then attach to an ally. That's when you want to do it. Because the last thing, the absolute last thing that you want to happen is you as a Yumi getting CC'd. Because if that happens, you're going to lose a tremendous amount of damage on in a team fight. Because the whole power of Yumi comes from being attached to an ally. So if you cannot attach to an ally, like you just lose so much damage. And that's the high risk, high reward gameplay that Yumi offers, right? Like for example, I'm attached to my Vagar. I will give him a lot of damage, but then I can choose. Okay, do I want to give him a barrier? It means I have to de-attach from him. Sure, if I get the barrier, it provides a lot of value, right? Like, of course, it gives me mana and it, it, it gives him the barrier. But if I get CC'd during that period, I cannot even reattach to him anymore. And that is the big problem that you have, because if I can't reattach, I'm screwed. Like, I'm absolutely screwed. So here you can see, before we got that kill, I just quickly basic attacked him. That's another thing, by the way. You know, when an enemy is dying, you can quickly de-attach, get a quick basic attack in, and then reattach to your ally. Like, the, you just have to find those few moments where you can do this. Here we have to take the dragon, because they took the Baron. We can just very quickly try to rush down this dragon, especially with a Vagar. That's a, it is a bit risky though, but with a Yumi and a Lee Sin, you know, I can just attach to him and tank up, tank up for him if I have to. I actually chose to go for the Vagar, which is fine too. Yeah, we have to be careful of the Jax though. Like, I don't know if the Shan can stop the Jax. He actually did. But yeah, now they have the Baron. All we have to do, all we have to do is survive this Baron and we pretty much win the game. It's of course hard to say because we are behind, but with the composition that we have, especially Vagar with three items, including a Void Staff, get to the late game, we win. Yumi Vagar, Yumi Kaisa is just absolutely incredible in the late game. Like, amazing. Yumi is also one of those champions that is, in my opinion, probably even the best duo queue champion. Like, if you're playing Jax in the jungle, 
dual queue with a Yumi, or if you're playing kill in the Baron lane, dual queue with a Yumi, or if you're playing as an ADC, dual queue with a Yumi. It's incredibly powerful and provides so much value. Look at him, by the way, he's taking a lot of damage. Now I'm healing him up. It is risky. I am like, I'm not really providing that much value on the Vega, so I'm attaching to the Kai'Sa now. I realized that, right? Like, I realized, okay, in this situation, I'm not providing that much value to the Vega. Here I will, so I'm attaching to him again. You know, every time you have to decide, okay, who am I gonna attach to? Who's gonna deal the most damage? I found an opportunity to hit my. Oh my god! Draven nearly killed me there. He's dealing an insane amount of damage. I got him. There we go. I got him. Exhausted him. Um, I knew that the Vagar would die, so I de-attached from him. Because if I didn't attach to the to the Lee Sin right there, I would have died as well. So you just constantly have to be uh, alert on what's happening. And if you realize that your ally is truly going to die, you have to quickly find a different ally. Because you don't want to be de-attached. When you're de-attached as a Yumi, it's game over. You constantly want to be attached. And like here, as you can see... I'll provide a lot of value. I don't even have to de-attach here. Like I can to quickly get the barrier, as you can see. I did get the barrier and I'm reattaching, but I don't have to. Like I'm just providing enough value just by being attached to an ally right there. Oh, I can get the Staff of Flowing Waters, which is an absolutely amazing item to provide support to the Vagar with, because then I'm going to give bonus ability power and bonus ability to the Vagar, which is really, really good. Oh, I screwed up. I screwed up. I screwed up. Two seconds, one second, he CC'd me again. This is what I mean. I'm useless. I am useless now. You see? Only now I can attach and I can do something again. I'm slowing in with my first ability and we should win this. Like, we're much stronger than them. Like, Draven cannot... Draven should not be able to win this. I'm gonna hit a basic attack on him. Boom and boom. Attaching to my ally. We got the kill and I got my mana back. You see? This is the exact way to play Yumi. We did lose two turrets actually. But yeah, it's, it sucks, but it's okay. I have my Staff of Flowing Waters, now Rabadon's Death Cap. Like, I, I told you always Rabadon's third item. But the reason that I went for Staff in this game is because I realized Staff actually provides more value to the Vagar. So instead of going for the Rabadon's Death Cap, which would have been an Im insanely good item, especially for the Kai'Sa, I'm going for the Staff of Flowing Waters just to support my Vagar, who unfortunately just died. <laughs> wow, they have a, they, they're strong, man. I need to go on the Kai'Sa, exactly. I need to go on the Kai'Sa. I'm exhausting the checks, igniting him, just to make sure we kill that one big damaging champion. Yeah, now you can see, me on the Kai'Sa provides a lot of value. Like, we just destroy them. Yumi in the late game is just insane, to be honest. Like, it's a crazy, crazy champion. And especially with the Athene's Unholy Grill, you're going to be healing so much. It is insane. The healing is insane. Like... When you get a kill or an assist, it stacks it up fully. The healing is just incredible. I don't really care about the healing. I'm just I'm just going on the Kaiser, as you can see. Just to give that bonus damage, and we're just killing everyone. Look at that. Like, we're literally just killing everyone right there. They cannot kill my Kaisa. Especially, it's really good, especially because she has a... She has a Guardian Angel, but if the Guardian Angel gets procced, uh, it de-attaches me. Keep that in mind. If the Guardian Angel of your ally gets procced and you're playing Yumi, you get de-attached. So be a bit careful with that one. Here I am I am contemplating who to go for because if I go on Kai'Sa, it deals more damage. But if I go on Lee Sin, I save his ass, right? Like that's the kind of thing that I'm thinking about. Oh, Draven. Oh. I have to be very careful. Oh, I only barely escaped there, as you can see. Oh my god. That's the thing with Yumi. Even if you have like 1 HP, if you're attached to an ally, you are safe. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> oh, we can get the Elder. Like here, we need to get the Elder. This Elder is going to help us push out waves as well. It's going to make the inhibitor minion, inhibitor turrets a bit less of a problem. Because we get bonus damage, because it's the Infernal. And we get... Uh, what was I going to say? True damage, which allows us to clear waves faster too. We need to get the mid lane turret as well, if we can. I need to get this actually. Yeah, nice. I actually stole it away. But it's better. If I get it, the reason that it's better, because Yumi with a blue buff, you actually don't have to de-attach from an ally. You can play much safer and still provide a lot of value, because you have infinite mana. So, as I said, with the blue buff, you can just attach to whoever you want to. I'm actually level 15, and Vagar is level 14, which is kind of funny. Oh, I can just heal him. It doesn't matter, you see. I'm gonna get enough mana anyways. Look, I'm just gonna heal him. Easy. 
It's as easy as that. I don't even have to de-attach. So with a blue buff, Yumi is even more powerful. So whenever you can, try to get the blue buff. Here, you can see I'm just spamming my abilities because I can. Here, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. What? Where? Where did he go? Did you guys just see a Gragas or was that just an illusion? What? Where did he go? Where did the Gragas go? He got one shot. He got. He just got one shot. Oh, I de-attached. De Not the smartest move yet again. Oi. Like at this point, I just shouldn't even de-attach. Like all I need to do is just just spam my abilities. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, I'm de-attaching here because it's a free hit on the jacks. But besides that, I really don't have to. Oh, look at that. We won the game. We won the game. Amazing. 31 assists, by the way. One kill and 31 assists on the Yumi. <laughs> Which is pretty insane. I'm not sure what's happening to the recording, by the way. It's. I think the video is still recording. I don't know. I hope it is. But yeah. Let's take a look at how much damage I did and everything like that. It's not gonna be that much. Oh, I was very close to Challenger here, actually. Kind of funny. I didn't even get the MVP. Yeah, there it is. So you can see Kaisa and the, and the Vega did a lot of damage, but a lot of that came from me as well, but it's going to count for them. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.